Good evening and welcome to tonight's performance of a documentary completely inspired by something that you all know, my friends, my confidants. Please, I ask you to remember when I was a child, Ivrist Alezonikos, in the small isle living in the abyss of the Viand Fandu, I did have a very important childhood event. Yes, yes, you all remember what it was. Yes, you remember my most important childhood memory. This memory, as you all know, is the inspiration for tonight's documentary. Indeed, while this memory was the inspiration, this documentary is not about that exact memory. As an artist, I am well attuned to the act of transformation, artistic transformation. This memory of mine, I wish for you to give. Indeed, think, think back to that moment of my childhood, that memory. And yes, I wish for you to tell me right now the memory of that most important event. I am looking for my notes from you, the live notes, which you must show to me by logging into YouTube, which I wish for you to do now, please. Can you tell me please that most important memory? The guesses, Madam Producer, are falling off a chair, memory of first bike ride, Montessori school, Indeed. or falling off the bike. And that is correct. It was falling off the bicycle chair at the Montessori school. You are all correct. This event deeply framed my memories and inspired tonight's performance of this documentary, inspired by most important memory of me falling off of the bike seat while in Montessori school. Enjoy. I never thought of myself as an outdoor person until that year. I just couldn't go back to that store, having broken all those precious china cups. Couldn't do it. Seventh grade was my best childhood school experience. Oh, it's when I knew I was finally an adult. That shiny red bike, it symbolized our marriage. It was new, it was mobile, it was exciting, it was young, it was innocent. And over the years, the bike just stayed in the garage. It didn't get ridden. It just stayed there, gathered dust. And I guess, that was kind of the metaphor for our marriage. Well, I guess we would have to admit that we both gave up at a certain time. Yeah, after trying for as long as we did, you have to know when to cut your losses. And I don't want you to think that I blamed you, Estelle. <laughs> No, I've never, ever thought that you blamed me, Ricardo. You, you, you have to understand when when you're young and you you meet someone attractive like that, you're, you're just willing to promise anything. You just make all kinds of promises that you never intend to keep because you're too young to know what a promise is, right, Ricardo? Well, I mean, at the time, of course, I thought I'd keep the promise. At the time, 
And I, I too, I, <laughs> I believed every single word Ricardo said. <laughs> when we bought the house together and we were going through all of the stuff that the people we bought it from left in the garage and we found that old dusty bicycle seat. It, it reminded me of when I was a little girl and Ricardo, well, he was, well, you remember. <laughs> it's, it's just like I told you about. I thought they didn't make these anymore. <gasps> Is that a banana seat? <sighs> he, it's a really nice bike seat. Don't look at it like that. I swear. No, no when, when I was a kid, if you had a banana seat on your bicycle, you were cool. Okay, well, good. I thought you were going to say it was a, a nerdy thing or something. <laughs> no, I used to pretend that my bike was a motorcycle and I was the Fonz from Happy Days. Did you? I used to pretend that I was riding on the back of some cool guy's bike because we were riding off in the desert. Look around this place, Estelle. This might be an old cobweb-filled, poorly ventilated, dimly lit garage now with a bunch of stuff that people left behind for trash, but that's not gonna stay that way. You promise this is going to be the house of our dreams? Estelle, give me that bicycle seat. I'm gonna dust that bicycle seat off and it's going to shine again in all of its polyurethane glory. And that is the symbol of the life I'm going to give to you, a yellow polyurethane ribbed bicycle seat. <laughs> and that was supposed to be our symbol of love, right? That moment in time, the bicycle seat. We kept it for a year or two. Mm hmm Or two. I guess, like happy days, our marriage jumped the shark. <laughs> that was the worst episode, by the way. I didn't know that he was married. <laughs> that was the farthest thing from my mind. I, I just wanted to buy a house. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. It wasn't her fault. She just wanted to buy a house. We had been staying at our parents' house for too long. And you know, they left it to both of us in the will, but it was time for us to part way. Me and Michelle just needed our space. Harriet always talk the good talk and always pretended to be my, my closest friend as well as my sister. She still does that, but I know better now. I'm working on trying to get Michelle to forgive me, but you can see right now, it's hard for us to be in the same room together. You betrayed, she betrayed me. I can't help that I fell in love. I mean, the heart wants what the heart wants. You can't, I'm really sorry. Harriet wants what Harriet wants. And then Harriet gets it. That's how it's always been. Well, for once, for once I was gonna take what I wanted, whether he was married or not. And he was so, married. Oh yeah, I, I dropped out of college after my first year. Wasn't feeling it, you know? I wanted to do something more creative with my hands. My family, they all went to college, but that never, that never fit for me. I loved woodworking in high school, 
the auto shop in high school. Hey, I even took a cooking, cooking class in high school. But when I was in college, my dorm mate, his father was a reupholsterer, fixed on old chairs, old couches, even car seats and stuff like that. So I dropped out of high school and college. And the little bit of savings that my family gave me to graduate college, I actually used it to start my own upholstery business. I didn't tell anyone at the time. And I got to tell you, the first year was really tough. I had to not only kind of lie to my family, but also learn this new trade. And as the years went by, I got better and better. I sprung the news to my family and they were actually very supportive, surprisingly. And things were going really great. And one day this guy came into my office, wanted to this bike seat reupholstered with some sort of banana configuration. I saw the passion in his eyes because the, the love he had for the person he wanted to do this for. And it made me think differently about life. The passion he had, I could see it now. Yeah, so this shouldn't take me long to reupholster for you. I mean, this is a pretty easy job. It has to be perfect. Well, well, we do great work here. And um, you know what? I'll, I'll take care of this one for you personally, okay? I don't see any plaques on the wall. Are you sure you're an expert? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> word of mouth is usually how people hear about me. Hey, I'll do the job for you. If you don't like it, full money back guarantee. Have you ever upholstered a bicycle seat before? Well, no. It's an unusual thing to get upholstered. I've never seen a bicycle seat like this. It's really unique. It must be for a very unique and special person. Oh, it is. It's for my wife, Estelle. Oh, nice. Do you want me to... Well, it's a... Oh, I... Oh, it's really worn under this part, huh? I might have to... Did you ever think about getting a new seat for it? A new seat? No, don't you understand? It's very important that that exact seat is preserved. If that exact seat is not preserved, it, it would mean the dissolution of our entire marriage. I've never had so much responsibility before in, in this upholstery business. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I could do this right now. It's too you much have pressure. To. You're the only upholsterer in six counties. I'll do my best. And I did do my best. But sometimes your best isn't good enough. Mine sure wasn't. Being Estelle's best friend, I, I know all her secrets. But this secret, oof, it was the ultimate secret. She told me that the reason why she was leaving her husband was because she was falling in love with the man who fixed her bike. The bike that was supposed to bring joy and connection and intimacy in their marriage. I couldn't believe it. Estelle is a goody two-shoes. She doesn't break any rules, let alone harbor a secret love. I personally thought it was exciting. It brought life into Estelle. She, she was inspired. It was as if she was a totally new woman. I remember that day. We were at a cafe, at our favorite cafe. I thought it was just going to be one of those girlfriend talks. You look different. Something's, something's up. I was wondering if you would notice. I was hoping you wouldn't notice, Sandra. <sighs> you're wearing color. You're usually, you're usually, you're usually a, a drab kind of gal. But this is this is a whole new fashion aesthetic, and I don't know. Something's up. Spill the tea. Thank you. Um. Well. Here's the tea. 
Ricardo has been really slow with this bike seat that he promised was going to represent our lives moving forward. So I went to this reupholstery shop where he had taken it. I was taking oh, it. That, yeah, the guy who works in that shop is a hunk. Um, about that, I, I don't know how to explain what happened. There was something with the fumes and the paint and he had this yellow all over him. I've never felt this way before. It's like I was possessed. I, I, I don't even feel like myself. He, he took this yellow paint, put it on a brush, held it towards me without speaking a word, Sandra, a word. And he, he, he painted it down my face, just a, a stripe. I have, I've never felt so physically in my body before. And and then it progressed from there with yellow paint everywhere. <gasps> are, are you telling me, Estelle? We were artistically inclined. <laughs> Estelle that I've known for the past 15 years? This is insane. Oh, I know. I, I was ready for a whole new life. I'm not sure I still am with cobwebs and waiting for some color to come into my life. And it just hasn't. Ricardo has promised and promised color and it hasn't. And this, you know, I don't even know his name. He's just the upholstery man. <sighs> you know, I want you to be happy, Estelle. If this upholstery man is making you feel this alive, this colorful, follow your heart. Yeah, I should follow that banana seat. Where it is right now is where my heart is. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you so much for your support. I love you. I love you too. And I was just really happy for my friend. Well, when, when Jerry came home that day and he had yellow paint all over him, I, 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 I knew something had happened because when we met, when Jerry and I first met, it was pink. Pink was what, what represented our love. And when I saw that he was covered with yellow paint, I knew that there was another woman. I told Susan all about it because I remember, I remember when she changed the color of Jerry's paint. We were, we were a deep purple. And then Susan came along and I told her, I warned her. I was like, he'll give you his heart till he finds art in another. I didn't, I didn't believe you. I didn't believe Harriet. I just thought I was the only one. I Purple thought I was the only one. You can't even make sense of it from purple to pink to yellow. I mean, it's not even following spectrum of any kind. It's, it's irrational. It's, it's bizarre. It's not even a winter color. Where did he even, I, I, it just, it makes, it all started with that bike something about the shape of the seat. I'll never forget when he came home that day, when he got the job for the banana seat, he was so excited about it. I should have known. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I gotta go, I gotta go in the back shop here and get to work, okay? <laughs> I'll see wait, you later. But wait, wait, Jerry. You just, you just, I just got home. I, wa I wanna talk, I wanna visit with you. What do you have? What do you have in your hands? What is it? It's a bike seat. Oh, it's it, a banana I never, seat. I never upholstered a bike seat before. It's 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 one of those original banana seats. The shape, the ribbed contours. Oh my, that's yeah. The, I love the curves of it. The feel, the the silky soft touch, the the colors, the the blonde hues in the banana. It's Jerry, gorgeous. You um, you seem. A little too 
excited about that seat? Uh, it's a special project. It's you for promise? a special. What was that? I said, do you promise that it's that nothing will ever come between us? That of course, I'm, why would you even think that? I don't know. There's just something different in your, your the way you're caressing that seat. Well, like I was saying, I've never upholstered this before, and it's for someone very special, someone that who's loved deeply. Oh, like yeah, you yeah. love me, <laughs> like the way you love me. I made um I made your favorite macaroni and cheese. Oh, I'll bring great. it to you in the. I'll bring it to you in the shop. No, you don't have to. I got some food on the way over. I got a burger. I'm full. I'm stuffed. I'm going to go in the shop now and uh, get to work, okay? okay? Don't don't come in. It's okay. You can just you know, do what you do. I'm going to be really focused. Okay. All right. Harriet, I, I should have known. I should have known. Because it's, yeah. It starts with the, I don't need to eat. I got a burger on the way home and then, no, I'll charge the phone. You don't need to plug it in for me. Oh, I'll go get the mail. And then you know you've lost him forever. I lost when him. I discovered that Estelle was having an affair with me with the upholstery guy, suddenly the whole thing became clear to me. The bicycle seat, that was not a symbol of love and longevity at all. That was the thing you fall off of when you're a kid. It's the thing that brings nothing but pain and disgrace and hurt. And it was then that I decided that no one in the town could have a bicycle. That way, everyone will always be happy. And so I guess that evening, I started the bicycle terror of Colvacoca County and started stealing and hoarding everyone's bicycle. It was awful. Bicycles were all gone. And for some reason, even though my, my business wasn't based on bicycles, everything started, started to decline. People were just staying home. And worse than that, I started to feel like it was my fault somehow, that I, that I was somehow cursed with this bicycle seat and that my guilt was now being paid off by the entire community. Estelle came over that night and she had something really important to tell me. Estelle. <laughs> Upholstery man, you take all of your yellow things back. This has gone too far. You can call me Jerry. That's not attractive. <laughs> I've discovered that you have a trail of women that you have artistically ridden the bike of, as it were, and, and caused this, this feeling inside everyone to feel so alive and wonderful. And, and it's really, this is a great feeling. However, it's ruining lives of the husbands and the lovers of everyone in town well i mean you, you this takes it takes two to ride a bike we had a tandem bike and you're the one who was shifting the gears here and pedaling your way also i did i was intrigued by the mystique the mystery the the art <sighs> yes yes you, you understand that each thread each knot each movement of the needle and thread moving through creating the, the the tapestry of love and art like my heart towards you and yes there were many other tapestries that i've woven in that's Did just you... it that's just it that is magical and ricardo 
is ruining the magic. He doesn't understand that once you fall off the bike, you get back on again. You don't just give up and throw it all away. No one will ever get back on a bicycle in Culvacalca County again. <laughs> Ricardo! Yes, it's Ricardo. You think I didn't know about your little tech, 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 tech? You have turned into something unrecognizable. You Me? I have turned into something unrecognizable? Look at you with that telltale line of yellow paint down the side of your face. And you, I gave you my patronage. Yeah, well, why don't you take your patronage back and give everyone else their bicycles back? Never! I have taken all of the bicycles, tricycles, scooters, blades, and even some old-fashioned 1970s-style roller skates. The kinds with the key. Do you remember you had to use the key in order to lock it on, and it always fell off? But that's not here nor there. What is right in front of us is that no one shall ever ride a bicycle again! We'll see about that. <sighs> I just want to get back up on the bike again. I just wanted to feel. So you see where my guilt lies? It was all my fault, and I didn't know what to do. He was running around maniacally carrying a child's bike with a little teeny tiny banana seat. I couldn't believe it. I had to stop him. What are you doing, sir? I asked him. He said, I'm ridding the world of hate by ridding the world of bicycles. I knew then I was in love. And I told him so. And he told me his story. And yes, I admit it. It was then that I suggested he get revenge on his wife for starting, for starting the whole terrible, terrible trauma. Yes, murder by banana seat. I was so sad. Our town, our wholesome town, it just became chaotic. Everybody was hell-bent on revenge, obsessed with bicycles nobody was nobody was in their right minds people started to become really scary and there was a rumor going around that people were going to burn their bikes Jerry, Jerry is my name, not a poultry man. Listen, I, I went to find, I went to find Ricardo to, 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 to offer him up an apology, but it was worse than I could have imagined. Oh my God, all the training wheels are gone too. Yes, and I shall soon take this can of kerosene and liberally scatter the fumes across all the bicycles, and then the great bicycle fires of Culvacalca County shall begin. Wait, I have something for you, Ricardo. The bike seat that you had given me, I finished it. And it's my finest reupholstered work ever. Even Leonardo da Vinci himself would be jealous of this, and I put your name on it as well. Here, take it. I'm sorry for what I had done. I've never felt more like the Fonz. Hey. Right. Now, will I... you stop this nonsense? No. 
this too must burn. That's when his descent into madness truly began. I don't know. I don't know how, how, how we started this thing. And I mean, I saw Ricardo on a recumbent bicycle in flames and he had retrofitted it with a banana seat and going down the, the main street. You remember that, right? You guys? Not only do I remember it, I was on the back of that damn banana seat. Mm -hmm. you. And not only do I remember that, I saw them both barreling towards me. I was running for my life with this fire chasing after me because Michelle encouraged my estranged husband to kill me. I mean, I can't believe that we can all sit in this room together now, the three of us, and, and, and not kill each other over this. Well, let's face it. The three of us, we're victims. We, we should bond together. We're victims of Ricardo. That we are. Banana bicycle burning maniacal man. He fooled us all. He knew our weaknesses. It was my fault, obviously. I, yeah. that, that power of the upholstery man, Susan's husband, brought out life in me that I couldn't find with Ricardo. And instead of us reconciling or having a discussion about this, well, he reverted to childhood, obviously with thievery and fire arson, just hooking up with the floozy that happened to pop on by. I just wanted to feel something. That's, that's probably where it all started with, with me too. Yeah, you had quite the confrontation. I remember sitting on that hill under the willow tree, watching as the warehouse burned. I thought that when all the bicycles had been burned and melted down and perhaps recycled into something harmless like, oh, I don't know, a park bench or something, I thought my heart would feel better, but it didn't. It just felt more open and painful than ever. And then I saw Michelle as she came walking up that hill and looking at me. Gosh, I will never ever forget that conversation. I'm the one who set the fire. It's my fault. I I shouldn't have told you to kill her. I, I, I know that, that, that it's really my fault that you went so crazy. I'm sorry. I wish I could love you the way you love me. You don't love me? No. You and Estelle and love, it, it all seems to be like like the fuel that gives life to that fire. It causes the fire to blaze, but the fire destroys the very fuel that feeds it. There's nothing left of you in my sight except ash. Well, you're, you're the ash, you, you brute! Yeah, I'm gonna do that again! <laughs> I just thought that you were going to save me, just like you were going to save our whole county. Well, listen, Ricardo, you're an evil man. You're not the innocent you pretend to be. 
and she walked off. And I knew then the only thing that I could do that might make me feel better was begin stealing and burning cars, trucks, and RVs. I had to do something about this madness of Ricardo. The first thing I had to do was to break it off with Estelle as much as I didn't want to do that. I couldn't have the entire county of Colvacolca peril perish at my mistake. So I walked over and greeted Estelle in our favorite part in the park. <coughs> Estelle, Estelle, what's wrong? Ricardo tried to set me on fire with the banana seat. What? Like, but triggered by Michelle. It, it was hard to see what was going on. Oh my God, Estelle, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's terrible news. And also, I can't see you ever again. What? Yeah, this whole thing is not working, you know? Don't you feel that? You, you tr you've been set on fire. Bicycles have been stolen. Equal. Equal problems. We can't be together like this anymore. Are you kidding me right now? No. You can take all of your, your, your paints, anything in your shop, and shove it. I'm burning your shop down. You burn it right And burn it down, she did. I never thought I was an outdoor person, but one of the RVs that didn't get burned, it felt like home to me. And I, I, I brought Sandra to come see it and she, she could see the beauty and the whole town was burning around us. And I remember Sandra just stood there looking at the RV with me. I remember it so clearly. What's what's become of our town? I thank God your RV's okay. I I just felt I've lived in that house for so long and now I just feel like this is this is home and I want you to come with me. Get away from this flame everywhere. But don't you think that there's a way that we can solve this? I mean, at, at the core of it is people want to be loved. I, I feel like we can, we can probably convince people to maybe talk and, I don't know, make things not burn down. I love that. We can have a a talk circle and everybody can come and express their emotions and be heard. Maybe it's just, maybe it'll be just easier to, to run away. I don't know it, that things are just so crazy right now. Do you think people will actually sit down and talk to each other? I believe in you, Sandra. You just made me believe in it. I think that you're the person to do this. You can bring this town back together. I'm gonna to have to talk to Sandra. I'm gonna to have to talk to some sense into her. She's gonna talk some sense. And that's, that's what happened. I never thought I was an outdoor person. I found an RV and then we found a way to get people talking. It wasn't easy at first though. So Susan, you know, it was, it's pretty wild that uh, it happened that way, but we worked it out, you know, and Ryan, we worked it out. Well, I think that the sitting in the, the talking circle, it was, it was the thing that, that really made all the difference. I mean, I have to say Sandra has a way um, I mean, the way that she took fire eating to the next level and, and 
taking all the, the burning bicycles and, and using them as a metaphor for how life and love, everything is always changing. And, and just because you fall off a, a seat or the fire goes out, doesn't mean you don't have the ability to reignite or get back on, right? And reignite and get back on, we did. You know, we did. I, the burning down of my business by that insane Estelle, it was the best thing that ever happened for, for our marriage. Sure, we were homeless for a little while. Sure, my family never talked to me again. But that doesn't mean anything in the face of what we had here. I know, Jerry, when, remember that first first night after after we did the talking circle, the, that first talking circle, and we decided to, to sleep under the stars that night. Yeah, it we was, had no choice. <laughs> yeah, it was so cool. It was so pretty. It was. Then, wow, and that's the Big Dipper there. I like the Big Dipper. Yeah, me too. You know, that's that's Mars. You can actually see Mars from here. Oh, look, a shooting star. Make a wish. Hey, um, I think I think we can we could live outside for like like this for a while. It's 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 pretty cool. I like it. And your upholstery skills. I think you could find a new place for them. Yeah, maybe I can. But I think it's best that I sew together our marriage again. Well, I like the way you started by sewing our sleeping bags together. Yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> it's going to be hard to get up in the morning. It is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The best thing that ever happened to us, for sure. I mean, now we know. Well, when the fire at the warehouse finally subsided and it all cooled down, I walked back over there just to rummage amongst the debris and the ruins. And I saw something there beneath all of the ash on the floor. So I picked it up and I dusted it off and <laughs> yeah, it was that big yellow banana seed. It wasn't burned at all. In fact, the fire, the heat, had hardened the polyurethane and given it a glint and a stamina like it never had before it went through that burning blaze. I realized then that there's something about love that will always persevere, no matter how hot the fire burns around it. And I've been thinking about that for the past 12 years as I've been sitting here in prison. And one day, if Estelle ever visits me, I'm going to apologize. You know, <laughs> living under the stars with Jerry all these years now, it, it just, it's giving me a new appreciation for him and the way that he sees the world. And I've never been happier. And, uh, you know, we, we moved, we moved to another city, um, Colva County, Colva, Colca County, we, we left there. We went to Mocha County and it's great there. I guess I, I've learned from this all that I have really, really bad taste in men. Um, so I've just kind of sworn them off. And um, Harriet and I are, are, are on speaking terms again. Um, we're living in our RV since my house was burned, and um, and I have a lot of cats, and I'm grateful for that. Truly, I love the new life Susan and I have built together, sewn together. You know, I never imagined I would be where I am today, 
I decided to try a new line of work, dentistry, random. I get exercise time in the rec yard three days a week. I just have to be careful not to bring the banana seed with me. Michelle did, doesn't know this yet. I was waiting for the end of this recording to happen, but we got our land valued and we're actually able to afford to buy a whole RV park. And guess what? We're going to rent bicycles. Who knew just talking, listening could be the answer to basically anything in life. Ever since that whole burning incident, I, I decided to open up a school where I, I teach people how to run talking circles and it's been really successful. I now work in art therapy uh, and working with inmates. So I get to have glimpses of Ricardo and we, we pass along the yellow bite seat on occasion. Uh, I've also to prove however lasting love can be in the true color of love. I focus on red now. I have realized the art and power of red and passion and fire and flames, just like the phoenix and getting off the bike and coming up again. Sometimes you just need another chance. Oh, yes. Bravo. Bravo. Mm. What a fabulous documentary inspired by my most cherished childhood memory, falling off the bicycle seat while in Montessori school. And it is true, there was a song written by the sisters of the convent of Le Viand Fondue, and it goes something like this. Ivries, Ivries, she fall off her seat. Ivries, Ivries, a lovely young girl. Something like that. Thank you so much, my lovely audience, my inspiring audience. You are so precious to me, and I am so glad to have you as my audience. I wish you all the best. Bonsoir, bonne nuit, et bienvenue, et accoutrement. Thank you. And that is our show, my friends. Let's bring the entire cast of How It All Went Down back on screen. On the count of three, everybody, let's give the audience a great big bow. Here we go. One, two, three. Everybody, thank you so much for being here. Let me introduce our cast over there playing Estelle for us. That's Lauren. Jerry was played by Arastu. Sandra was played by Aran. Harriet was played by Geraldine. That's Lynn playing Michelle. Susan is played by the wonderful Eileen Tumlin, who not only played Susan, uh, she also played, what is the character's name, Eileen? Ivris Alizanikus. Yeah. She also played her, and Eileen is the creator and director of How It All Went Down. So everybody, when you're standing up in your living rooms, giving us a huge round of applause, give an extra special round of applause to Eileen. My friend, thank you all so much for being here. This is a bittersweet moment for us because that was a wonderful, wonderful show, I think. And it also is the final show of our online summer, spring, spring, summer season. And it is the final online show for Synergy Theater for a little while. We are going to be taking a brief break as we get our act together, because as many of you know, Synergy Theater is coming back live to the Lesher Center for the Arts in Walnut Creek, California. That picture of that theater behind me, well, I'm gonna be standing there really one day in October. We are going to be starting off with spontaneous Shakespeare, and in order to rehearse up for that show, we need our Thursday nights back. And so that's why we haven't been performing on Thursdays the past two nights. And this was the natural end of our 
uh, of our season. Now, I kept promising everybody that we're going to be here all throughout the lockdown, whatever you want to refer to it as, until everybody's able to go back outside. And we will be coming back. We won't be back every Thursday and Friday for a while, but we will be coming back with some type of online programming in order to keep this alive, because you folks who have been out there watching our shows after the fact or coming here live week after week after week to support us, you mean the world to us and we're never going to let you down. So Synergy Theater is going to be here for you. If you happen to be in the area, the Northern California, San Francisco Bay Area, go to SynergyTheater.com and become a subscriber to our season and watch us on stage live at the Lesser Center. We have four great shows spread out all over the year and you can get all four shows for just $75. Oh my goodness, that's a great deal. Also, our online school of improv is not going anywhere. In fact, that is getting bigger and better all the time. So go to SynergyTheater.com, take an improv class. Arastu over there is going to be teaching improv one, improv two, and improv three. I'm going to be teaching a bunch of master classes. We have improvising Shakespeare, improvising film noir, character intensives, improvising full length plays, everything. Go to SynergyTheater.com, look up a uh, class schedule in the School of Improv and take an improv class. Finally, as you know, we are a nonprofit organization. We rely very heavily on the generous donations of our patrons to keep us going, to keep going online, to get back into the theater. Please go to SynergyTheater.com and make a generous donation. We would appreciate it very, very much. My friends, thank you so much for being here. We will see you here. We will see you live. In the meantime, stay safe safe, stay smart, stay healthy, and always remember that Synergy Theater loves you. Good night, everybody.